because that's between you and I. Sure. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. I'm sitting here with Tom Metzger, director of war, until 1980 was the Grand Dragon of the KKK in California. A lot of people have said a lot of different things about you, but I have a scenario I want to put out because I think that will help me understand. Say you're going down the street in your car, a toddler, maybe two and a half years old, toddles out, gets hit by a car, car speeds away, you get out, you go, and the child is black. Yes. What do you do? I do what I would expect anybody would do, and that's get, it, get the kid help, medication, whatever. Mm. Uh, under those conditions, uh, that's exactly what I would expect anyone who is associated with me to do. Strangely enough, that's not the answer most people would expect to hear from you, but we'll be right back. Jer. Can you clarify what the white Aryan resistance is? We, we know it is war, but what is, what is it? I think the, the simplest uh, way to put it is that we are a separatist, racial separatist group, an association that believes in the uh, separation of the races. But beyond that, we believe in resisting the despotic actions of the federal government and uh, the economic determinists, uh, the big corporations mm -hmm. who tend to push us all around. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would tend to raise the uh, view of race to somewhat of a position of a religion. Not a religion, but close. In other words, our race is our religion. What makes you superior? I don't think that I can determine that at all. I think nature will determine that. Nature <clears throat> will determine, well, has the white race got too uppity and too intellectual, too intellectual and off into religious cults and to where they think they don't have to compete right down on the street. Uh, they can commit suicide if they want. Nature throws up the basketball, the best race, the best man, the best woman wins. So I don't know whether we're superior at all. I, would, I hope that we are a superior race. And that's not hating everybody, it's just, I love what we have produced in the world and our race has produced. If society does not change, what do you think is gonna happen? Well, there's no doubt that this is going to break up. The United States allowing millions of third world people coming into this country, even beyond the racial issue with different cultures, different uh, religions and so forth, uh, and no frontiers for people to escape to, uh, it's going to self-destruct, it's going to split up. I want to ask you about a, a quote that uh, your son supposedly made, I don't know that he did. Uh, it says he advocates violence, saying that his followers must not only be intelligently racial, but kick ass physically, no exceptions. If attacked, he said a skinhead has every obligation to attack back, but you can go 10 times farther, go for the gusto, destroy him, anything you have to do, poke the eyeballs out, beat the hell out of him. This sounds like a football game. <laughs> Who cares what you have to do? Now, well, I think he's, if, if that was a quote from my son, it was, he was being quite candid that uh, we should not go around as predators in the street, uh, beating people, uh, pushing people off the sidewalk, and we should treat people with the respect that they treat us. However, ah, okay. if you are attacked, then you, there's no holes barred. You use whatever strength at, at, at your command, and you make sure that person or that group of people don't get up to attack you again. 
and I have no problem with that. I think that's in the statutes of the state of California, that if somebody tries to assault you, you have every right to not only put them down, but pursue them uh, and make sure they stay down so that they don't come back and attack you. Could this be taken as, as it supposedly was by the gentleman in uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, who claim that they were taught by you and your son that the way to go about this was to grab blacks off the street and beat them. That what we're talking about is there uh, was a young Ethiopian man yes. who was attacked by skinheads and killed. What happens when people say, well, Tom Metzger said, and this is the result of it? Well, for one thing, uh, the man that uh, was involved in that, as far as we know, didn't even read my newspapers before that time. And, and now you're I, talking about the, the young man? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, my position is there's nothing that we have ever said in the newspapers that ever could catch up to the movies. I mean, in television, we can all see nine million different ways to kill people every night on TV, and we can uh, go to the movies and see some very interesting, sophisticated ways to kill people. So the fact that Tom Metzger publishes a newspaper, which some of it could be construed as violence, uh, is sort of nonsense. When I've you seen see some of the cartoons, cartoons that are in there, and they're, they're pretty, pretty they raw. Are. They are. And they are very inflammatory. Yes. Are you sure that the message is not go kick ass, but let's talk about leaving? Uh... Actually, actually, sure, the, the, the cartoons are very graphic. We get their attention, but then read the articles about environment. We talk about the environment and race. We talk about all kinds of things in there and a lot of history that uh, young white kids and other people need to read about. This wasn't this uh, wonderful, great country a hundred years ago if you were a working man, working 16 hours a day and making 20 cents an hour. But most of the people who were working 16 hours a day making 20 cents an hour were from other countries. Because a lot of the white people that were here in New York, all the immigrants that came over from Russia and Germany, I mean, they weren't making any money. All the rich white people were making a lot well, no, of money. Well, no, these people, see, we don't uh, separate the uh, Irish and the Germans. That's they're right, white. they're white. Okay. So they all come in here, and then we did have a melting pot to a degree, and mm -hmm. after a few generations, the Italians were marrying the Irish, and the English were marrying the Germans. And that's okay, because it's pretty much the same thing. That's right, but it, it does not seem that uh, the black race is an assimilable race directly, Meaning, uh, I, mixing with the whites, totally, to be accepted. It's mm -hmm. not going to happen. So I, I recommend to every black young person out there to be a black nationalist, to be a black separatist, be proud as hell of your race and go for the best thing you can for your race and let's sit down and talk. And sometimes they're going to find out to the people they thought were their worst enemies could be their best friend because we don't lie to them and I won't lie to you. Mm -hmm. I believe the black race has been used worse since they've been released from slavery than they were before. Why is that? Well, I think that uh, the black leadership in this country has sold out to the transnational corporations, just like the white leadership has. I believe that the, the black race is, uh, as long as you, as the Uncle Tom it and suck up to the white man, uh, they are given better jobs and they get better careers and things like that. But when they say, like Farrakhan and Malcolm X at one time said, hey, we don't need that, you know, we're black, we want to have a black nation or whatever, then they're horrible, like the young black men I know in uh, Portland the DJ and the talk show man, a blind man, who was made the mistake of being nice to me, having me on his show, his, the station was broken into, the whole place was ransacked, his braille machine was broken up, and I gave them money to right. fix it, and then the FBI wouldn't investigate it because, hey, he was friendly to Tom Metzger. Because, so Is this a trend? <laughs> Should well, we be locking this building absolutely. up? Absolutely. <laughs> a, abs oh, a black person who speaks to me and negotiates with me on a one-to-one -one basis had better watch out and better say the right things. Well, and I have to tell you, those days of watching out are over for me. Good. You know, because I don't Good. care. I'm curious because, if, frankly, I, I, one of the things I want to know is, and you've answered this, but I want to voice it anyway. I want to know where 
it comes from? Where is racism born? What is, what is it? Well, there's people that come into it because they're raised in it, a lot of people. Mm. And myself, uh, there was no black person ever did any real bad thing to me. In fact, when I first moved into Fallbrook, I loaned a black fellow some money to, to help pay for his down payment on his house, things like that. Uh, it wasn't somebody stealing my bicycle when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I educated myself into being a racial separatist. I read the anthropological books. I read uh, the history of the races. I, I, I just kept reading and reading. I read reports on genetic uh, research and, and uh, all of these things from Arthur Vining's labs and all over. And it's all there if you put it together that there is differences in the races. And i.e., if that is a, if if there is a, that much of a difference, then we should separate and each go for its as far as it can go but not together i'd miss talking to you we'll be right back <laughs> i could call you on the phone oh, you could <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom. now see i think dialogue's important we're talking a, a second ago uh and we were just discussing whether we were all created equal as as supposedly God said, you're not big on God, organized no, religion. No, I don't buy that at all. Yeah. I In fact, I think it's a, it's a fraud in the, against the people of the world. Yeah. But now, did you grow up believing in separation of the races, or did the, is that something that evolved? Where, where did you come from? Well, there was no such thing as separation of the races in the town where I lived, the area. There was just no one really of other races around. Mm. And so it wasn't something that uh, where I was raised in the South, I was raised in the Midwest, a town by the name of Warsaw, Indiana, which <laughs> there was no race problem. There, just, there were a few black families there. I remember the uh, young fellow who was uh, voted class president in the class ahead of me was black. Mm -hmm. His name was Russell Sansbury, and as I recall at the time, no one really thought much about it because it was before the civil rights movement. Mm. And believe it or not, I think the attitude from a lot of whites towards blacks was a lot better, at least where I was, before the civil rights movement. Was that attitude seen but not heard? It was just, uh, here they are. If they're respectable, you respect them. If they're not, you, you don't. And uh, you know, I, I heard more white people denigrated around town than, than the black families I knew. If the law came down and you had the right to tell people where to go back to, who would have to leave here? Uh, we, of course, would like to see a, a homogeneous white North America. We really would. If uh, We would like to see voluntary repatriation to other land areas of the world. However, we have talked with uh, people like uh, Louis Farrakhan's people about this and others who have advocated a uh, separating of some of the states of this country. Uh, the United States is going to break up anyhow. That's, I can guarantee you that in the next 50 years. It's just too large with too many cultural and racial diversities. It's not going to come together. It's going to break apart. So we must be looking forward, both the black race, Hispanics, and others to what we're going to do. And it may be very logical that uh, X areas of a country uh, will become black and X white or X mixed, but it will happen. It has been said that you are a man who proposes violence. Is that so? No, because I think there's a way out of this. And I think that the representatives uh, of the black race and other races should sit down at the table. Come, let us talk. Because if we don't talk and begin to talk pretty soon, it will erupt into major social upheaval. And once it gets started, then there's not going to be much talk. Have you been able to convince, I, I was reading some of the newspapers, and have you been able to convince the young people that there is a nonviolent way to have discussion? Because the skinheads, or as they're known, there's so many different factions of, yeah. on both sides, sure. um, seem to have a very, very violent streak. 
That's true. A lot of the violence is perceived in the mode of dress and like that more than actual violence. I think if you compare the crime figures of skinheads to any other group in American society, you'd find their actual uh, criminal uh, convictions to be very low, but they do have this fearsome look, the way they dress and so forth. And there have been some of them that have done some pretty bad things and gotten some bad trouble. There's no doubt about that. But what we have tried to do was tell them, hey, uh, if you're going to be a target of every policeman when you walk down the street, then uh, why not uh, grow your hair out, get a suit, get a good job, get a good education, keep your racial views. You can't, you're not going to solve this problem by beating people up in the street. You're not going to solve this problem by grabbing a black person or any other person and killing them. We're talking about major change, political change has to come in this country, and it can't start there. It, we have to go higher up. Do you, have you raised your children as separatists, or have you given them the opportunity to go out and meet different types of people and come to their own decision? Uh, my kids have been exposed. I have a giant library of thousands of books. Most of the books are critical of my position. They've been encouraged every time they come home from school with an argument from a teacher. Mm -hmm. Well, fine. Now let's read about it and talk about mm -hmm. it. And uh, for the most part, they've come away and said, yeah, the, your, your logic is correct. Mm -hmm. And if my premise is correct, my logic is correct, then we're correct. I mean, if my premise is wrong, that mm -hmm. all races are equal, we're all just one big happy family, then I'm totally wrong. But aren't we? No. We developed over millions of years in different ways, from different areas of the world. And we're the Icemen from the North, as uh, we've been called. Well, I'm the warrior from the South. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> We're back. Sorry. We're back. <laughs> We're back with Tom Metzger. What's your stance on abortion? Or pro-choice, I should say. Well, I think that people should... Uh, we've sort of modified our view on that, which may seem a little bit callous. We've said that uh, uh, non-white people should have all the abortions they want free on demand. We would encourage white people not to have abortions. However, I don't believe I can support a law because I'm so sick and tired of more and more laws in this country mm. uh, that would force people not. Because if a white lady does not want a baby that bad, then I don't think the baby would be really loved and taken care of. And so even though I would encourage white women to have the children and at least put them up for adoption, mm. I wouldn't support the law anymore that would be against it. Uh, we are out. We will be outnumbered. Like I said, we're maybe 16 percent. Gore Vidal said 16 percent the other day in an interview. And so I don't believe it's a, if the black race can help itself out by limiting its population, have a higher living standard, they should do it. And I'm not just talking about blacks. I mean, I, this thing is sort of pick. It's like pick on blacks. I mean, you got Hispanics, no, no, yeah. you got all You're these about other minorities. People. I'm talking about minorities. So yeah. it's. Abortion for minorities only with white women having the choice whether to do it or not. Well, or am I misunderstanding? No, I'm not saying force black people mm -hmm. or anybody okay. to have an abortion. Okay. Okay. But I'm saying it should be abortion on demand for minorities, and the state should pay for it. And uh, white women should be encouraged but not forced mm. not to have an abortion. Because I wish the, the more laws we make, uh, the worse it gets. Something to think about. Thank you for coming and talking to me. Thank you. And thank you for showing up. I'll see you tomorrow night. Night Court is next on KUSI. Then at midnight, Tom Selleck stars in Magnum P.I.